Hey guys, I've had this channel for almost a year now, and I've realized that I've never made any videos about my, probably my favorite show of all time, Doctor Who. Um, so this show has been on for like 59 years at this point, 58 years. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, but I thought today I'm just going to be ranking my favorite Doctors, all 13 of them, from least favorite to favorite. Now, this is, does not include um, the Peter Cushing Doctor, the John Holt Doctor, or the one from the Jodie episode, the one that's like, I don't know, that we, you, you know who I'm talking about, I don't, I don't know who she is. Um, so I'm, I'm mainly just going to focus on the people who actually played the Doctor and stalled in their own, like, episodes, you know? Um, so, starting off with number 13, we have the 13th Doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker. Now, okay, I know you're gonna say, you're gonna be like, no, you just don't like because he's a woman, that's not it. Um, I was actually really looking forward to a female Doctor, and I actually liked Jodie Whittaker as an actor, because he was very good in, um, Black Mule. But, like, the portrayal of her in this is just really not good, it's not consistent. She doesn't feel like the Doctor. She feels like somebody pretending to be the Doctor. She has no chemistry with her companions. Her companions are so forgettable to begin with. Um, when she makes these big speeches, she doesn't have a commanding tone in her voice that all the other Doctors did. She never feels like she's in charge of the situation. She always feels like she's a passive participant in her own episodes, which is never good because the Doctor's always kind of been an active role in the story, but she's always like questioning things left and right, which is something I don't like about her as well. She's always like, what's this? What could this be? Well, usually that fulfills the role of the companion to do that, and the doctor answers. But this one, she kind of does both. Like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's just another way to make the companions useful, useless. Um, I don't know, she just doesn't seem like she gives a fuck half the time. She's very, like, she kind of too eccentric without having any layers beneath her. Um, now, I'm not just, like, watched one episode and then gave up. I watched a whole, like, season and a half before I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. Um, I tried, you know. Now, like I said, I don't think this has anything to do with Jody's um, acting. I think it has mostly to do with Chris Chibnall and his lackluster plots, characterization, dialogue, villains, everything about it sucks. Um, so yeah, sorry, Jody, but you're in last place. Moving on to my number 12 pick, I'm going to say The Eighth Doctor, played by Paul McGann. So, um, unlike other Doctors, he didn't have a full season to be the Doctor. He just had, like, one movie. Um, and most of his run is actually captured in, um, audiobooks by Big Finnis. Now, I've listened to a couple of these audiobooks, but they're very, very expensive, so I haven't listened to that many. Um, so I can't really judge him that well, so that's why I'm putting him here. Like, from what I have seen, he's okay, but... Not enough for me to form a really solid opinion of him. He's probably the doctor I know the least. Um, uh, Paul McGann himself is a really good actor. He was good in the so-called Luthor with Idris Elba. So if you, I recommend that if you want to see him at his really good acting. But yeah, there's not really much for me to say about him, so I'm putting him second to last. So next we have uh, the sixth doctor, played by Colin Baker, who I kind of feel bad putting down here, but... He's just had a really inconsistent run when he was the Doctor. This has nothing to do with Colin Baker. I actually thought his performance was brilliant. Most of it was based on the scripts. Um, he starts off, like, in his first episode, he almost strangles Perry, which is kind of messed up. Like, I don't know what the writers were thinking. think this, this is a good way to introduce the new Doctor by having him, like, strangle somebody. It just wasn't fitting, and he didn't feel like the Doctor. But over time, he um, became more of the Doctor, like, especially in his second season, The Trial of the Time Lord. I thought his Doctor in that season was great. But his full season, he was all over the place. He was too, like, arrogant and brass, you know? But like I said, they toned it down in the second season, and he was able to turn it around. However, I'm not a big fan of The Trial of the Time Lord. I think it's a weak arc. The stories in it were mostly weak. Um, so maybe if he had the personality of his second season, but the plots of his full season you know, some of them, then maybe I would have liked him better. Like, if he was given one more season to really perfect his Doctor, but unfortunately he got filed for reasons no fault of his own. So that's why I'm putting him at number 11, you know? Um, he's a good Doctor, you know, but... I don't know, he was just so inconsistent. 
And I wish he got like a proper regeneration, you know, like instead of just Sylvester McCoy in a wig, turning into Sylvester McCoy without a wig. And speaking of Sylvester McCoy, that's my number 10 pick, which is the seventh Doctor. Now, if I was judging this based on his second and third seasons, he'd be way high on this list. But his full season was so goddamn terrible, it kind of offsets it. He just acted like a goof, like the whole first season. It doesn't help that Mel was terrible, like, the villains were bad, like, that was just a stupid season. It felt like I was watching, like, something on Disney Channel, you know? But he was able to turn it around in his last two seasons. A lot of it had to do with his Darko persona, as with his um, interesting chemistry with Ace. I kind of liked his chemistry with Ace because he was much more manipulative than the other Doctors, and that means sometimes Ace couldn't trust him. So that was a cool dynamic. Uh, so yeah, I liked Sylvester McCoy. I kind of wish he got a proper send-off. Kind of like Colin. He didn't really get a good send-off. He got cancelled in 1989, and he, we didn't see him regenerate until 1996, when he was in the movie for like five minutes before he stepped out of the TARDIS and got shot by like LA gangsters. Like, what a terrible way to go. You know, that's like the worst regeneration out of all of them. Like, it was just a, a stupid way to go, you know? Now moving on to my number 9 pick, I'm going to pick the first Doctor, played by William Hartnell. And basically from here up, it's like, I love these Doctors. Like, these are like the best, you know? Which says a lot about the show, that they have so many good Doctors. So, William Hartnell deserves some credit for starting the show. He would just, right off the gate, he kind of played the mysterious old man. Like, who is he? Where is he from? Why does he have a big box in a junkyard? And then just leads into like this crazy one adventure after another. I like how he starts off grumpy and very rude. But because of Ian and Barbara and his own granddaughter Susan, he slowly softens into kind of a kind old grandfatherly figure. And I thought William Hartnell played the role very well. He kind of had the confidence that I, I don't know, I just love his confidence when he played the doctor. He just did a great job. Um... I felt bad for William Hartnell, the actor, because he had dementia when he was filming it. So sometimes he'd mess up his lines. You might notice that sometimes. And um, he sadly had to leave the show when his dementia got too bad. He got so difficult to work with. But, you know, if it wasn't for how good he played the part, the show wouldn't have gotten past, like, one season, you know? So, great doctor. Um, yeah. I liked seeing him in the Ten, doc the Ten Doctors, like, a few years later. Even though it was probably like a small little cameo on a TV screen, but it was just nice seeing him in real time, you know? So now for 8th place, I'm going to say The Fifth Doctor, played by Peter Davison. Um, so he had a lot to live up with following in Tom Baker's shadow, but he managed to pull it off because he had a really different approach. He's probably the most empathetic of the Doctors, and it's shown because he really, he really cares about saving people. Like, it's shown by the way... His persona is. He's kind of the action hero doctor, kind of the, um, I'm gonna save the day doctor. It's kind of hard to describe. Um, but yeah, I think some of his companions are kind of annoying, especially like Adric or Tegan or Toloff. Like, I don't know, I just feel like he had too many companions. So a lot of the stories didn't give the proper amount of focus to him himself. But I just love the way he played it, you know? Uh, I like this character arc of just trying to do the right thing, but things keep wearing him down. He had, he did a great performance. By the way, if you haven't seen it, he kind of did like a little sketch with David Tennant. Where it was like the fifth Doctor meets the tenth Doctor. It's called Time Crash. It was really kind of funny and it was cool. So if you get a chance, watch that. So yeah, I don't know. He was a great Doctor. Next on my list of number seven, I have the second Doctor, played by Patrick Troughton. So, he had a lot to live up with after the great performance of William Hartnell, but I actually prefer his era because he really delved into the more, like, sci-fi horror elements, I guess. And, um, his era is where we met, like, the Ice Royals and the Brigadier and stuff like this, that elements of the show that we would really come to know in the future. And his portrayal of the Doctor was interesting. He kind of acted like a goof, you know, but he was really manipulating the whole scene. He was the smartest man in the room, but he made it seem like he was just some, like, 
wheeled man in a hat, you know? But he knew exactly what was going on. He was able to control the situations without the other people even knowing him. I loved his, um, I loved his friendship with Jamie. I thought that was really cool. As well as Zoe. I thought he had really good chemistry with Zoe. And I feel like his regeneration was the best regeneration out of all of them. So, if you've ever seen that, the World Games, definitely one of the best episodes of the series. Yeah, he was just a great Doctor. I liked all the times he came back, like the three Doctors, the five Doctors, the two Doctors. He came back more than any other Doctor. And I loved his chemistry with, like, John Poultry's Doctor. I thought that was kind of cool, too. So, anyway, yeah, he's a really good Doctor. I loved seeing him. Um, if it wasn't for him being successful as the second Doctor, then they would have just canceled the show right away. We didn't have a three, four, five, six, seven, you know, like, if it wasn't for him's performance, the show wouldn't have been able to go on. And a lot of times, when TV shows replace cast members, it's not the same. You know, like Community or The X-Files, it just, it just wasn't the same. But with him, he kind of reinvented the show in a new, interesting way. So I feel like he has a lot to do with Doctor Who's success. Moving on to number six, we have the ninth Doctor, played by Christopher Eccleston. So, he had a really, like, tough place in Doctor Who. The show's been off the air for, like, 16 years. And he was the first Doctor to kind of jumpstart this new generation of fans. And he did a great job. I liked how um, he was kind of darker compared to the other Doctors. He was very raw, really, from his encounters in the Time War, which, at the time, we didn't really know much about. So we were kind of confused as to why he was so, I guess, aggravated a lot. But he was able to hide that most of the time behind his charm. He kind of had this quick-witted northern charm to him, um, which was kind of a facade for his dark, undol, you know what I mean. Um, this was the season that Rose was actually tolerable for me. I thought she was good with 9. I didn't like her with 10, but she was good with 9, so he had a really good companion dynamic um and yeah i think my favorite scene with him was talking about like how everything ends you know how life is just kind of meaningless it kind of shows that he's in a real nihilistic place in his life but meeting rose kind of brings him out of that depression because throughout the series it becomes more and more kind of jovial and fun so he has a really good character arc compared to a lot of the doctors um so that has something to do with why i like him so much and I just wish he got, like, another season. You know, because he only got one season. But at least he got a proper ending, you know? You you can't say the same about 6 or 7. At least he got a proper ending. So, I don't know. Um, hopefully he comes back for the 60th, but it's probably not going to happen. I really wanted him to come back for the 50th, but it didn't happen. But, you know, on the bright side, we got John Holt out of the deal. So, yeah, basically, he was good. Um, I know Christopher Eccleston had some problems with the production staff, so that's why he left. So, good for him. You know, if he's in a toxic Hulk environment, he shouldn't have to stay. But, you know, the fan in me still wanted him to stay at least one more season. Number five on my list is uh, The Tenth Doctor, played by David Tennant. And, uh, first off, I gotta say, he's probably the most overrated Doctor. Because, I don't know, I guess teenage girls thought he was hot or something. But... Even though he's overrated, I still did like him a lot. He wasn't that good in his first season, mainly because of his cringy, awkward romance with Rose. I wasn't a big fan of that, but I liked him a lot better with Martha and Donna. Because him as chemistry with both of those was very good. Um, he was kind of the quintessential Doctor, in a way. Because he reminded me a lot of Tom Baker's Doctor. And he kind of had an ego problem. However, that made him more layered. You know? It gave him more flaws, which made him a more interesting character. So they definitely did that on purpose. Um, he had some really good episodes, like at the top of my head. Uh, Doomsday was a good one. The Girl in the Fireplace was good. Blink, The Master, um, The Family of Blood, The Midnight, Torn Left, he, Library episode. Like, he did a lot of really good episodes. So I think that helps in my enjoyment of him. And David Tennant, you know, he was a big fan of the show from he when, when he was a little boy. So I could just respect his enthusiasm for the part. You know, he did a great job as the doctor. He stayed just as long as he needed to. I know he was offered to stay for season 5, but I'm kind of glad he didn't. Because his send-off was pretty enjoyable. Um, a little over the top. You know, the whole I don't want to go thing. But I thought the episode itself and the plot itself was a good send-off. 
Um, yeah, pretty much anything except for the Rose stuff makes him one of my favorite tackles. Number four on my list is Matt Smith. Um, so he did a great job as the doctor. Um, I liked his youthful energy matched with his risal aura about him, you know? Like one minute he's jumping around and then the next minute he's making a real wise speech about his past and stuff. Like it was the way Matt Smith played him. He was simultaneously like a 15 year old and a 60 year old at the same time. Um, he's just great doctor right there. Uh, Stephen Moffat's writing was great. His characterization of the doctor was great. The way they introduced him was great. I love this chemistry with Amy and Roy and Rivel. Clara was okay, but I feel like she was better with 12. Um, but yeah, the way Matt Smith played the doctor was so good. Um, like I said, he has a lot of good episodes, like the Vincent Finco episode, or the day of the doctor. Oh, the whole astronaut arc, I was a big fan of, like the Amy and Roy baby, that whole thing in season six. I thought he was good in that. Um, yeah, he's a great doctor. Uh, definitely would like to see him come back for the 60th, that'd be really cool. But I'm hoping he comes back to the audios, because I feel like him and Capaldi are the only past doctors at this point who haven't been in the audios. You know, they're still alive. So, you know, if Big Finnis ever wants him to be in the audio, they should probably ask him. But outside of Doctor Who, I'm a big fan of him in The Crown where he plays Prince Philip, and he's also going to be in like a Game of Thrones prequel spinoff thing. I'm not really sure what it's about yet, but hopefully that's good, you know, for his sake. I'm not a big fan of the TV show Game of Thrones, but I like the books, so I'll probably be watching the prequel, you know? So I just hope Matt Smith is good in that, but basically I'm getting off topic. Uh, the 11th Doctor was great, and he had a good arc, like the whole like cracks thing kind of appealed throughout his entire run, so... He had a good beginning, middle, and end, and I like how he was innovated as he did, you know? He had a really good send-off. I like how, unlike Tennant, who was all bitchy and moaning about his death, Eleven actually accepted his death and welcomed it before he realized he got another regeneration, and he was like, oh, okay, I guess I will generate now. He, he was just like a positive influence on pretty much all the people he met, which shows how much of a hero the Doctor is. You know, we've seen this before in Five. Yeah, I think he kind of emulates five a lot, but he also kind of emulates two with the whole like um, hobo from outer space who's a lot more wiser than he lets on. So number three, we have the fourth Doctor, played by Tom Bagel, and this is probably my dad's favorite um, because he grew up with him in the seventies, and I also saw like a lot of his stories because he had a lot of episodes. You know, he was the longest running Doctor; he was on for seven seasons. So naturally, his era um, could be mixed. You know, when it's bad, it's not that bad. But when it's good, oh my god, it's so good. Like, especially his stories with Arthur Sarah and Olila are my favorites. Um, he played the Doctor so well. Like, for lots of people, he is the Doctor. You know? When I think the Doctor, I think him. I was actually him for Halloween a couple times. I just got his scarf and his jacket and my hat. Um, so yeah, I don't know. He's a great doctor. Uh, the, I don't know. He played him with this aura of pure alienness, you know? Like, you look at this guy and you're like, something's up with him. You know, he's not from around here. And that's kind of how he played him, you know? Uh, his stories were great, like, the Genesis of the Daleks episode, or the Ark in Space, or the, um, the Key to Time, or the, uh, the Leela one with the, at the lighthouse. That was really good. And the one with the master, like, the deadly assassin, that was a really good episode, too. His regeneration episode was pretty good. Um, his chemistry with his companions were all pretty good, you know? Um, mostly Sarah Jane and Leela, like I said, but, yeah, I don't know. The way he played the Doctor was so good, and Tom Bakel, when he returned in the 50th anniversary, I was so happy. Because, like, he played the Doctor so long... He's so recognizable. Seeing him again in the 50th was probably the best part of that episode for me. Um, I like how he still does audio for Big Finish. And he's Doctor Who is still a big part of his life, you know? I know he had some problems behind the scenes, but all in all, like, he's just a great Doctor. Um, I should do a video about, like, my favorite episodes of him, because I could do a top 10 list of my favorite Tom episodes alone. He just a, he's just a great Doctor, you know? There's really not much else I can say. 
Moving on to number two, I'm going to say the third Doctor, played by John Poultry. So, um, his Doctor was very different from the first two, and pretty much every Doctor who came after that, because first, first three seasons, about, he was stranded on Earth because of the Time Lords exiled him, and he couldn't use the TARDIS, and he was basically stuck working as like a scientific advisor for UNIT. So that kind of kept him grounded, and it was kind of the first major story arc the series has, you know? Him stuck on Earth. And this meant that he had a lot of good supporting characters to act off against. He had Liz Shaw, he had the Brigadier, he had Benton, he had Joe Grant, and later on he had Sarah Jane. So I thought he had really good chemistry with all of his companions. I think the best companion, the best companion doctoral friendship in the entire series was him and Joe Grant. The way they acted off each other was so well. Um, he just kind of a father figure to her. Like it's just really, just a really good. Um, companion doctor dynamic and he kind of played like the James Bond doctor he was an action hero he had those cool gadgets he had the fun calls and it was always like it was never boring with him you know uh, I liked when he did get control of his tortoise again because then it kind of became more of a conventional conventional doctor who season you know um, my favorite season though was his first season because I did like Liz saw a lot and I liked how different it was from the first six seasons that came before it so he was able to shake the show up a little bit, also because he was in black, he was in color. Now the first two doctors were in black and white. Um, so the feel of the show was instantly different, you know? He had no companions from the other two doctors, so it's basically a first start for him, and he handled that terrifically, you know? Uh, he's my favorite classic doctor, and he's just a great, great actor. He kind of played him in, in a serious tone, but still light and friendly at the same time yeah he, he probably had like the most consistent episodes there's only like two or three episodes i did not like of his so yeah what, what a great doctor you know and for number one it's not a surprise because you guys probably guessed this by the process of elimination but it's peter capaldi um he's actually the second doctor i watched live as it came out the first one i watched was like matt's last season so he was the first doctor i watched from like beginning to end live you know um, and he just nailed the part. Even in the episodes that weren't that good, his performance carried them, so they're still watchable. Um, he had the best speeches, like, when he had his speeches, they were pure poetry. And Capaldi's genuine acting really dissolved him, uh, Emmy, or whatever they have in England for the Emmys. Um, his relationship with Clara was so dynamic and, um, ever-changing that it always kept you on your toes. And he had the best arc out of all the Doctors. He started off as kind of a psychologically damaged Doctor, kind of questioning his own path and his own morality, before his friendship with Clara kind of warms him up and he begins to accept himself as like, you know, the hero. And he plays the hero who just kind of wants to have fun and live the most out of his life, you know? And Clara, after Clara left, he forgot about her and kind of revolted back to um, kind of a scientist teach old doctor. And that was his relationship with Bill, who he also had a good dynamic with. And he just had a little quirks about him that I liked. I liked his sonic sunglasses. I liked his guitar. Because Peter Capaldi played guitar in real life, so he kind of incorporated that. Um, I love Listen. Heaven Sent is the best episode in all of Doctor Who. Because of Peter Capaldi's performance, and because of the poetic lines he had, like, a lot of this has to do with Stephen Moffat's writing of the Doctor. Because Stephen Moffat wrote all those good lines. Or, you know, most of them. Other writers did, too. But the way he was characterized was so good. Honestly, in my opinion, the show sort of just ended after he left. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be mean, but it's the truth. Um, so yeah, he's... He's what the doctors should be. He's what all the doctors should be striving towards from now on, is trying to be as good as Peter Capaldi. Because in my opinion, he's the gold standard. And I know what I said earlier about how I don't really listen to Big Finish that much because they're so goddamn expensive. But if he ever comes back to Big Finish, I don't care if it's like $100, I'll fucking buy it. Because I love Peter Capaldi's doctor. Um, maybe some of it's nostalgia. Because, like I said, I watched him when I was in middle school. So, a lot of that has to do with um, how happy I was looking forward to his new episodes every week. But, 
even in retrospect, when I watch his old episodes, I'm like, damn, he's great. He's a great doctor. Like, there's a whole, like, hour-long video on YouTube just showing the best speeches of his doctor. That's how you know he had some good speeches. Um, so yeah, he's the definitive doctor, in my opinion. If I met him in real life, I'd go crazy, like, when, um, Troy from Community met LaVar Bolton. That would be basically me if I met Peter Capaldi in real life. So yeah, that's pretty much my list of, um, all the doctors ranked from least favorite to favorite. Um, but yeah, like, at least the top ten are doctors I love, you know? So, there's only a couple negatives on it. Which so goes to show that even though Doctor Who's not at the place I want it to be right now, it still has a big history of good episodes and good Doctors that I could always go back to and watch, you know? Because that's the beauty about Doctor Who. You could just watch it in any order for the most part. It doesn't really matter. It's easy to pick it up, you know? Just start with the part one of a full part series, and it's great. Um, if you haven't really been into Doctor Who and you watch this video, then... Hopefully, like, my descriptions of the Doctors could help you figure out which Doctors you want to start with. Or if you haven't seen episodes from any particular Doctor, watching this video could hopefully convince you to watch them. Except for Jody, she sucks. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please, I don't know, keep on the lookout for my other videos. And I hope everybody out there has a nice day and stay safe and peace.